How's the sound? Just bring it down a little bit. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you, Vaughn, and thank you, uh, State Lens, for allowing me to present to volunteers. Hello, the press. <laughs> um, so I just want to—I always like to start off with a little story, and I, I move around a little bit. So if you can follow me a little bit, this will be. Um, so in 1999, my then supervisor came to me and said, "Hey, there's a little spill up in your recap. It's called Stuyvesant." How would you like to go up there and do volunteer management? And I'm like, volunteer management? Oh my, that sounds like fun. Sure, I'll go. So I jumped on the Fish and Wildlife King Air, flew up to Eureka, got off at my rental car, cruised on over to the Wildlife Center at um, HSU, Humboldt State University. I walk in and I'm greeted with, well, one, the sound, the smells. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's what I would call organized chaos. And that's exactly what it was. It was organized, but it was chaos. And I walk in and I look at the then volunteer coordinator. I'm like, hey, I'm Cindy Murphy. I'm here to help. Funny statement. And um, she looks at me and she goes, you're with the state. And I said, I am. I work for Shimada. And she's like, here's my clipboard. Here's a list of volunteers. I have no idea what they're doing. And I'm out of here. And I'm like, oh my. So that was my introduction to volunteer management. And I have to say, I've enjoyed uh, my time doing volunteer management for over the last 16 years, and that's my quick little story. So outline of the discussion for today, whoops, as I click them all, what can happen if you don't prepare to do something with volunteers? And that's really community volunteers. And then volunteer plans. You live in California, you should, you should know what volunteers, volunteer plans that we have here in the state. The different types of volunteers, we work with three different types. And I'll explain that a little bit more. And then, of course, I want to talk about with Vivio because that's why we're here. Um, some of the challenges, some of the successes. So what can happen? A lot of things. One, during Refugio, the beaches were right there. The community could just walk right on out there with their Home Depot buckets, shovels, and rakes and start cleaning up oil. I have to say this picture really disturbs me because I look at all the Home Depot buckets and I'm wondering, where's the Jeep? Well, priority, where's the safety? Where's their PPE? Where's their personal protective equipment? They're in t-shirts, shorts, barefoot, with their rakes and shovels. And I'm like, okay, so where, where are all those buckets going? Who's gonna come by and pick up those buckets? So, and you know, these folks were out there within four hours of the spill. So that was, that was part of our, our problem. And then no early presence. When I did talk to some of these volunteers, and I don't call them volunteers, I call them community folks that just self-employed, they said there was no government agencies out there. There was no one directing anything. So they felt like they needed to do something. So that's why they deployed within the first four hours. And a lack of public information. I want to say to this gentleman here, where were you taking that pelican? Were you taking it home with dog soap and washing it? It just, yeah, I would love to have a chat with them. And I didn't know Bob, Bob knows him. So Bob knows him, so maybe at some point we can have that chat. What happened to that pelican? No. So what are the relevant plans? So the non wildlife volunteer plan mentioned by Yvonne earlier, so that's in section 4000. So that plan was created after Costa Busan. Anybody remember that little spill in San Francisco? How does that vessel hit the bridge like that? I have no idea. But anyway, it was created because of the Costa of Busan, because of the hundreds of people, hundreds of folks that self-deployed to go pick up charcoal. Um, so that's what we created. It's in section 4000. We did the same thing for the Los Angeles Long Beach ACP. So the, the non wildlife volunteer plan is plugged in there as well. And there was a whole team of folks that developed that plan. I just happened to be one of them. Um, the National Response Team, after Deepwater Horizon, they created the use of volunteer guidelines for oil spills. That is a really good plan. And the volunteer subcommittee helped contribute to some of that information in that plan. Um, what's in that plan, which is very helpful, is the feds actually have a memorandum of understanding as part of the plan. And it's, if they need assistance with volunteer coordination, they have an MOU with Corporation for National Community Service, CNCS. So that's a really nice plug. If we ever have sort of our big, huge, ginormous oil spill here in California, we can pull in some of this. It's a great resource to have. What would a presentation be without an org chart? So if you follow your incident management handbook, this is where volunteer coordinator resides, part of the command. Um, typically, uh, if I'm an SOSC or one of the incident commanders, you want your liaison officer, you want your public information officer, 
And by golly, don't forget your volunteer coordinator because you're here in California. Um, if volunteers become a larger issue, then the volunteer coordinator then moves into the volunteer unit under the planning section. So that's how we're organized in ICF. Volunteer requirements, I won't go through all these, but the Department of Fish and Wildlife has the authority to use volunteers, or administrator does, you have to be 18 years of age, good health, et cetera, attend health and safety training, whatever that training might be. During Refugio, we had what we call four hour house comp. So it's a modified 24 hour uh, house walker training and we can modify that from one time only. It's only good for once in a lifetime. If you come back to another spill, say six months later, you have to go through the 24 hour house walker. And then we also recommend, not really enforce, but we would love folks to have some ICS training. Uh, FEMA puts the free training online, so that's pretty simple. So we let folks know about that. So in the required forms, they fill out a volunteer service agreement, which deems them a state employee, state employee of the state. They have the same rights as I do. Photo release form, um, volunteer skills, we have them identify if they have any skills and we can better place them in a, a specific uh, position. And then we also have them fill out a social media agreement. Okay, we can't really enforce a social media agreement, but we have them fill it out anyway because that kind of prevents them from going on Facebook or Twitter, sort of. I'm a Doty stand up and Andrea Moore. You guys were so important during the review. They are part of our volunteer team. So I really shout out to them. We didn't do this without the, those two ladies. Uh, they were deployed first on day one or day two, and so they did an extraordinary job. Well, that's weird. Okay. Okay. That's weird. Okay. So I'll have to look back on So I'm so. Okay. So there, I talked about there's three types of volunteers. The first type, we have our pre-trained volunteers who are through the Oil Well Care Network. Anyone not hear about OWCN? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, the Oil Well Care Network, UC Davis, amazing group. They help us uh, care for oil wildlife during spill. They have, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about them a little bit later. Then we have affiliated groups like Fish and Wildlife has our natural resource volunteers, uh, CERT teams, community emergency response teams. And then the third group, Oh, and the most troubled group is the spontaneous volunteers. So the Old Wildlife Care Network out of UC Davis, they have about 35 member organizations like SeaWorld, International Bird Rescue, Wild Care, uh, Marine Mammal Center, great organization. They have about 1,000 pre-trained volunteers, so these volunteers have already been vetted, they've been trained for oil spill response, they're a great group of folks. And they go through specialized oil wildlife care training. Um, they have several like webinars that they do online, so phenomenal group. Then we have affiliated groups. These are pre-identified groups. For instance, like our natural resource volunteers for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So these folks have already been vetted, which is great. They have a certain level of training. We utilized California Conservation Corps during Refugio. However, they weren't quite volunteers. We did pay them a little bit. I heard the laugh back there. And then the last group are spontaneous volunteers, individuals from the community that come out and want to help out. And they are just in time trained. So let's jump into Refugio here. So this is what it looked like. This is what our org chart was uh, during Refugio. We established a volunteer unit uh, on day two. The supporting agencies, we had Santa Barbara County uh, Community Emergency Response Team, 
coordinator from the city and the county, and then we had some assistance from Cal Volunteers. And thirdly, we had folks from UC Santa Barbara Search, amazing group, so that made up our volunteer unit, along with Department of Fish and Wildlife. Some of the considerations during refugia that we were concerned about, obviously safety is our priority. Um, so we had safety concerns, uh, what types of tasks these folks should do, community political issues to address. Someone say we? Yes, a lot of those. And then tribal and cultural concerns, as you know, and you're gonna hear more about that from uh, Michael. And then lead agency, who was the lead agency in liability? So the Department of Fish and Wildlife stood up and we were the lead agency. So liability. Liability was a big question. Of course, when I told you, we actually uh, signed these folks up through our volunteer service agreement. We then took on the li liability issue initially. However, and I'll say this a little bit later in the presentation, we didn't have one volunteer injury, which was great, and that was a success. However, if we had, we would have built back to the responsible parties. So during uh, Refugio, we had Conservation Corps, I mentioned them, they were out of helping some of the contractors uh, clean up um, tar balls. They helped at the staging sites, they helped with traffic control. We had uh, emergency response teams posting signage. We had our natural resource volunteers doing transport. So they were, again, a great, a great resource. Uh, so the CERT teams, they posted fishery and beach closure signs. Um, so we found a lesson learned on posting signage we actually didn't have them take a lot long. So when we had to go back and pick up those signs, <laughs> some of the volunteers didn't have very good memories. So um, for in the future, we will do a lot long so we know exactly where they are. For the first time, we actually had support from uh, the CERT teams in the incident command post. They were in there on day one and throughout. They were helping docks. They were in planning. They were answering uh, the wildlife hotline. So they were a huge resource. And this was the first time we had ever used affiliated volunteers in the incident command post. And so that was, that's a great plus, great benefit. Um, they helped with traffic control. Can't say enough about the CERT teams. They were at every single HAZCOM training that we put on. They were there when we did our uh, deployments. They helped with site registration, amazing group. They posted flyers and brochures as well. Um, our California Department of Fish and Wildlife National Resource Volunteers, they helped with transport, which may not sound like a big job, but it was huge during Refugio. Um, traffic in LA, I'll just say enough about that, I'm from Sacramento, I thought I had traffic, not at all. Yeah. The other big success, so we expanded our volunteer use, the department did, and uh, we made the Oscar registration available online on our CalSpill Watch website. Um, we expanded the HASCOM trainings to the community to assist us uh, picking up tarballs, and so we did a couple tarball uh, operations, and I'll talk a little bit more in my five minutes. So the snapshot, I'll just give you the numbers, who doesn't like numbers, affiliated and community volunteers. We had trained about 263. I can't tell you how many registration forms we had in the queue, probably closer to $2,000, or 2000 2000 I wish I had 2000 <laughs> um, and then we deployed about 159 for tarball uh, cleanup and then pre-trained volunteers we had about 77 deployed the big number here is the member organizations uh, 21 that was a great uh, um, outpour of assistance from OWCN so some of the challenges no early presence from government agencies on the shoreline initially remember those folks from the community self-deployed within four hours so we have to be faster we have to have folks on the shoreline. Um, environmental conscious community, easy access to the shoreline. The phases of response wasn't really clear to the community. We didn't have a full functioning JIC on day one. And we have to think about that. And then no early response uh, for community volunteers to help out. So community volunteers weren't pulled in until really until day seven. So some of the successes, we use the non-wide volunteer plan. It's great to have a plan to kind of the first 24 hours, how do you move forward? Um, we had a multi-agency support in the volunteer unit. We had the city of Santa Barbara, the county of Santa Barbara, the state fish and wildlife. So huge um, coordination with uh, the very levels of um, government. We had an online volunteer registration form, easy access. We didn't have to set up an emergency volunteer center and drive people to the EDC folks could sign up online, so that was a good plus. And like I said, we had over 2,000 folks registered to um, help out. 
We utilize community volunteers, and then the community open house will receive benefit on day 13, I believe you said. But again, day 11. But I think we needed to do that a little earlier. The big plus is no reported volunteer injuries. 